All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for attending our um, ELL webinar series. Um, today's webinar topic is ELL assessment and evaluation using assessment methods to enhance instruction. Well, my name is Jamie Trujillo, and I will be moderating the webinar. And I am here with our wonderful presenter, Don Dutton. So if at any point you have any questions, please feel free to just put them in the chat. Um, there will be plenty of opportunities throughout um, to ask questions. Um, which will probably, you know, have you on mute if that's the case. But if at any point while Don is presenting, um, please feel free to use the chat. I will be moderating the chat the entire time. So I will hand it over now to Don. Outstanding. Thank you very much, Jamie. Here we are talking about assessment and evaluation and methods that we use. There's a couple that we want to remember particularly. And what I put in the flyer, you can see here on, this, on my second slide, uh, as a reminder, you know, if you've been teaching at all, that we don't do this anymore in English class. Uh, we don't do this kind of thing necessarily. We do projects. We do other kinds of assessments, and we're going to get into that. But huh, I thought this was a nice photo of like, oh, yeah, that's what we used to do. Um, and um, this is um, who we are, uh, Don and Jamie, and we're going to talk today about how to assess and check for understanding and also what we do then. Um, our objectives today are that, um, that you all will be able to assess students' readiness to succeed, um, assess, assess students' needs in the class, and help with tech issues. Uh, I'm going to assume that most of us have a tech component in our classes, if not a full hybrid kind of situation. We know that that's a really good system um, if the students you know, have access to the internet and have a device and those kinds of things. And I know those are challenges sometimes, but we're gonna be talking about tech issues a little bit today. And um, I hope that after today, you'll be able to implement and, and use at least one low or high tech formative assessment and that you can use summative assessments effectively to inform lesson plans and improve student instruction. Uh, speaking of assessment, let me do some right now. I have um, three questions for you really. And uh, the cups represent your ounces of experience. So first of all, where are you from? And choose a cup indicating your level of teaching experience. Uh, and, um, and choose a cup to indicate the level of proficiency, English proficiency of most of your students. So I can tailor what I have to say here today. I'll give you a minute to put that in the chat. Okay, Jamie? Oh. I was going to use Starbucks cups, but I thought that would that would be cheating. <laughs> okay, so okay. Um, experience maybe sixteen, and then as far as student levels, they're mixed, but most seem about three, from her understanding. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good to know. Good to know. Um, I'm going to ask you to go back to the chat here with a quick check-in and, and just write one way in which you assess uh, and evaluate your students' understanding. It's a, I know it's a pretty general question. But just, just give me an idea. What do you do? Ah, okay. So she says she's not their ESL instructor, but they do use TABE Class E. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, that leads me right into the three kinds of assessments because TABE Class E is one kind of assessment. Uh, what we want to do is look right here at the 
kinds of assessment um, and needs assessment, which the TAPE Class E is a, we would put it in that category because it tells us placement and determines some, some things of what the, where, the, where the student should go and what they need to learn English. But also we're gonna to talk today about formative assessment and summative assessment. Uh, as we know, uh, the TAPE Class E is one of them. <clears throat> one thing, one way that we uh, find out what our students need. But in class, we, uh, you, um, Christy, you're an experienced teacher, so you know that when you begin your class, there's always some part of what you do that is an additional assessment where we determine the students' goals and their and their needs and their motivation and their and then and then their their access at home uh, to you know to the internet and to technology, but also to to time. Do you have time to study? Uh, when in the day do you study? You know, talking about those kinds of things uh, to determine how much, what the, what an expectation is for your class. And we want to determine a baseline level for curriculum and class tools, uh, you know, the high tech and, and low tech tools. Um, formative assessments are those that we use on a daily basis to inform instruction one day at a time. And to get uh, information back about social emo social emotional state of the class, in other words, how how well students are responding to evaluations. We know that there's a certain amount of anxiety that goes with um, uh, waiting for a period of time to a summative assessment. Um, in in um, in some places, that's very stressful. And here too, we in uh, in the United States, we have summative tests to get into college and all kinds of things and those are stressful so um how are you know how are students um operating around doing evaluations more often in class and can we can we can we create a, a little bit lower level of anxiety by providing these short uh, formative assessments during the during the class um and then uh, summative assessments are where we want to evaluate the overall skills at the end of the session or the unit and the pinpoint strengths and weaknesses and, and uh, the summative assessment provides feedbacks to build and modify our curriculum. Um, so beginning with needs assessment, <coughs> excuse me, we can look, <coughs> excuse me, um, how important the needs assessment is. Uh, when we when we make any plan, what are we what are we what are we trying to do when we at NM Propel plan workshops for you, we base that on a needs assessment, an assessment that we send out to every program in the state to see what people, how, you know, how, what people know, what people don't know, um, and how they, uh, how they judge their level of, of, uh, of knowledge about certain things. And then we kind of fill in the gaps. That's our idea. And, and what you want to do, in addition to your, uh, um, you know, onboarding test, in your in your school is to do in your classroom also to like I said determine goals and motivation finding out what English gaps there are and uh, and connect with students in, in all of those ways that we talk about home life again and um, access to time and a table and light and maybe a quiet area is is any of that stuff available to, to time for study and um, we want to we want to determine determine the learning outcomes and talk about what style we're going to teach with and also for future placement and to choose uh, to choose technology. Um, here's an example of uh, some um, some assessments. Uh, their tape class E is right there, and um, this is this is formal and rigid. And you know you can read this chart here as I go through it. But um, in addition to that, you know, in our class, we're going to use interviews and reflections and self-evaluations. Um, in all of this evaluation and assessment talk today, we're not um, forgetting about self-assessment and how important it is for students to have some sense of how they're doing. I think it's I think it's a common question for students to ask, uh, teacher, how how am I doing? Uh, am I learning sub? What do you think, right? And uh, I would hope that they would they would be able to assess their own uh, needs a little bit as well. Um, but but in addition to those academic things, we do want to remember about goals and motivation and also tech level. Um, 
at the end of the uh, workshop, I'm going to, I have a, a link to a site that has four different um, assessment instruments mm. um, that, that, that can be used in to determine some of this stuff. Um, let's do another quick check-in here. Um, I just mentioned several ways to, to assess student need. Um, is there, I, I'd, like to, I'd like you to write into the chat another way, maybe something I missed or something in addition that we can use as, a, as an assessment tool in the classroom. And Christy, I think if you'd rather, um, you know, just say it verbally, I think that would be. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, can you hear me? Yes. Am I? Okay. Okay. I didn't know if I was muted. Um, yeah. Well, I just popped there into the chat. When I was in Korea, one of my uh, colleagues, he was lovely. He would do Simon Says the very first day of class. And if the student couldn't uh, couldn't do what Simon Says, touch their head, touch their, you know, arm, whatever, then he knew, okay, we need to uh, to work with you a little bit on some, some more basic um, skills. So those kinds of things that are fun. Um, I used to love to play um, a, a vocabulary game called Hot Seat. Um, I don't, don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but Hot Seat, effectively, whatever vocabulary was that we were working on, I would have a PowerPoint um, and have it set up on the screen a, a, with a whiteboard so I could mark on the screen. Um, and I would have a chair in front and the, the, the uh, students would be divided into two teams. So their, the goal was to get um, their teammate to say the word, but they were not allowed to use, in this case, Korean, um, you know, because then they would lose points. We had all these rules about how you could lose points and how you could gain points. Um, but so it was a fun, interactive, uh, you know, way to, uh, to help students with vocabulary. So it was, that was one of my favorites, but I thought the Simon says that my colleague used was pretty fun, but I just never, never used it. I love the Simon says thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, playing is a great way. Uh, yeah, play is wonderful. You, yeah, yeah. Um, the old, the old term, um, total physical response. Mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. methods we've been using for many years. Uh, sure. Uh, that's what it was called at one time. Mm -hmm. uh, still, there's every everything that we know about education makes that a good exercise, right? Sure, sure. There's so much to be learned by saying, you know, raise your left hand, close your hand, raise your mm -hmm. point finger, point to something, or, and like Simon says, has, mm -hmm. has a lot of that in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of yeah. understanding there. Well, I would, I would incorporate cell phones too, because they were the, my nemesis, but I was like, well, if I could figure out a way to work with it, so uh, one of the things that I would have students do would be to, like they need to order a pizza or they need to um, get some missing yeah. items for a brunch. And so one of the, the group of students would have to go outside and be able to um, describe whatever it was that the group needed. Um, so it was kind of that fun thing, you know, to so. Getting to that that is so smart. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I was just thinking that's very collaborative, you know, that, mm -hmm, that, that involves mm -hmm. a lot of teamwork and communication, yeah. verbal communication. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, you know that's, that's really conducive to. Yeah, and you know, and it's this technology, you know, thing that can really be our nemesis, but you can't get away from it. So why not use it? So the, uh, Japanese, the Japanese businessman that I was working with, the Sony, the Sony people who were mm. they were um, they were scheduled to come to the States. And um, to practice talking on the phone, we put chairs back to back, and and then their assignment was to do whatever it was, something, communicate something, and that was that was really fun um, mm. as a way. But but you're doing the same thing by uh, putting the person outside. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, use, yeah. You can't use the physical clues and the face and the exactly, and that. exactly. And that's so much of communication. Yeah, and and who doesn't need to order a pizza from time to time, right? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> or pick up groceries. Like, first thing, first yeah. Thing yeah, I mean, it was it was really great with accountable and non-countable nouns, the groceries, because, you know, can you buy a cup of flour if that's what you need? You need to get some flour. How much is some? And all that. Anyway. <laughs> that's perfect. That's exactly yeah. the things that we, yeah. we need to do in this assessment. Um, uh, moving on here to formative assessment. Um, we, uh, I, I've included here some low tech the kinds of things we were just kind of talking about. Um, 
you know, raising your hand, uh, um, raising a hand, uh, uh, something like that. Show one to five fingers to indicate the degree of understanding. Now, in this example, I, I, I said that the student should indicate their degree of understanding. Um, this comes into play the question, do you understand? Which we know is a terrible question to ask mm -hmm. in the classroom. Uh, but, but indicating a degree of understanding, hopefully uh, the self-evaluation comes into play there. And, and students can be truthful about uh, one to five, uh, I understand it or I don't. And then, of course, standing up, uh, uh, moving around in any kind of way is always good. Uh, and, and I really like pointing to things. Um, mm. I like going through the names of the names of our fingers. Um, you know, I, I, I use my hands a lot to count and ordinal ordinal numbers and cardinal numbers and and all of that sort of stuff. But uh, but uh, <laughs> this last one, I used to have this vocabulary program that was. Uh, and I would project on the screen and, and, the, and I would just let the students shout out the meaning of the word as it popped up. And sometimes we'd have two teams and, mm. and it would get, <laughs> get, get loud sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it's a sign also, of a good ESL class. <laughs> yeah, we are loud in ESL class. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, uh, some of the high tech things that we, that we got to remember here is um, um, sharing, sharing a document that is producing something that we can see uh, mm -hmm. and will tell us how, how good students can do this thing, higher level students mostly here, um, building a community or group, creating Google Slides, pre presenting something to a class, uh, creating a whole website for the class, post mm -hmm. things on the website, Facebook account, all those kinds of things. Um, just some more examples of the Google tools. And I mentioned this because at, at NM Propel, we mostly are Google-based um, program. We, we support uh, all of the Google tools. And again, um, we are available for, for you, for your program, for individual help, for group help, anything. But, um, but we want to make sure that, that it goes through uh, the director, Tina, any requests for uh, those kinds of things goes to Tina. Um, and I think Jamie might mention that again at the end, but uh, here, Google, Google, Docs, and I wrote PowerPoint up there, but really Google Slides is what we use. Uh, again, Google Sites, Groups, Facebook Workplace, Chat, uh, Google Forms. We use Google Forms as our assessment tool to send out to instructors, mm -hmm. you know, as I mentioned before. Uh, Nearpod is a cool program. And then the kind of things that we can share on a screen with a group in a, in a, in a meeting a synchronous kind of meeting is allow students to add things to a whiteboard or a mm -hmm. near pot board. And of course, Zoom, those kinds of things. Um, check, quick check in once again. Can you think of one more formative assessment? We, we, we just talked about assessments there, but can please in the chat, if you would write in a formative assessment. You have one minute. And by the way, we have been joined by Aaron Clark. So welcome, Aaron. So yeah, either of you can um, put any other ideas that you have for formative assessments in the chat. Hi, Aaron. Is Aaron unmuted? Hi, John. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. It's nice to see you. Nice to see you. Is it freezing up there yet? It got down to 30 in the um, oh, evening. Oh, right? It was definitely really? 30, 38, Ooh. I should say. <laughs> Feels good, but the houses are cold. So it's still, mm. houses are still heating up, right? <laughs> good, good. Mm. All right. Uh, Christy says provide students immediate feedback. Maybe modeling is a way of correcting. Um, and then Aaron also mentioned exit tickets, which I know is a is a training yes. for the back of the room best practice. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, you know, I would like to just add that we have an instructor that has his students stand in a circle at the end of every single class. Oh, and cool. This is something that they actually do at the beginning and at the end. So this is this is a multimodal um, assessment. But they set goals at the beginning of every class, and they say them out loud. Oh, nice. if, if they come in late, they write them on the board. And then um, at the end of every class, they get back in a circle, and they talk about whether or not they met the goal. Um, and if they had any issues meeting that goal. 
That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Um, moving on to summative assessments. We're just going to jump right into these. These are the kind of tests that most of us know about, the, a final exam kind of thing with a multiple choice and open-ended questions. And, and we know, you know, along with how the GED has changed three or four times in the last 40 years or so, um, the questions are more complex now. And so we want to we want to echo that, uh, you know, for our adult students in, in ESL or GED uh, and, and use questions that are more why and how questions than, than uh, you know, what year did somebody do something, right? We want to know why and, and how and those kinds of things. So try to, we just want to try to put those into our assessments. Um, and we talked about the real life applications here, uh, an interview, ordering food, that's, mm -hmm. that can be a summative assessment. Mm -hmm. And then uh, filling out forms, um, job applications, uh, the student forms, the, uh, you know, library card, uh, whatever. Uh, there's all kinds of things that we we have to we have to do uh, to uh, in our normal life that are great English lessons. Uh, of course, project based uh, based uh, tests also, and of course, our assessment. I mean, our our focus we know in adult education is job right. It's job readiness. So all of those skills that we soft soft skills we used to call them or still call them, and um, those kinds of things also we want to know can can students work together that's why i mentioned uh collaborating with a with a uh, document uh, google docs uh something like that collaborating in some kind of way to produce a, a product a, a story or something so so we're teaching how to work together some of those skills that are related to a job situation and then just just to review what we do with all of this assessment, the results of all this assessment is key and it's pretty simple. Uh, I mentioned it before, but we administer the assessments and then we review, uh, we look at it, uh, see, how, see how our students did, look for highlights and hiccups. And then what do we do, revise. And uh, I wanna make a point here that uh, I'm not suggesting that the, it's like the teacher's fault or that it's your fault uh, somehow that you need to change as a result of the summative investment in uh, assessment, but that um, you may find out through this that the, uh, the time of the class is a horrible time or the building's mm. hot or uh, <laughs> there's a whole variety of things that could come out of, of this. Uh, you, you, you were... Uh, most most teachers are told uh, or given uh, here's your curriculum for this session we kind of would like you to finish these chapters or finish these projects or something like that and um, uh, sometimes we, we can't do all that sometimes we our students are not ready for that and we need to look at that and maybe revise our our outcomes um, and that's pretty simple it is the is the to, to remember that last, part of the assessment is then to use it to continuous improvement. I, I love that term. We all we always want to um, do better. Um, so in conclusion, um, all three assessments, we sometimes don't think about needs assessment as an in-classroom thing because our students have been handed over to us in the classroom by the, by the program, by the school, and they've already assessed the student to a certain extent. But uh, formative assessments need to be a daily expectation of you and of the students, and summative assessments can inform and enhance instruction. And that pretty much concludes my part of this. Jamie, I believe here, yes. we're going to start with you. Yes, absolutely. So this is really just a reminder of how to access the Propel NM portal, um, because as a reminder, we now have the um, Propel portal as a way for you to access um, the webinars, sign up for courses, view recordings, all of that. This is your training portal. So in the chat, I'm going to be putting the website, which is just propelnm.org. And as you can see, when you go in, um, first off, and I, and I think it'll show up on the next slide as well, but I, I want to make sure we stay on this one for a moment. You will log in. The easiest way to log in is with your NM Delta account. If you do not have an NM Delta account, 
you can request one um, by going to our website, the NM Delt website, and I'll put the chat in there for you as well for that one. I just have to grab that. Um, so I'll put that in, in a little bit, but you can always request that email. Um, but as you can see, there are English, English language acquisition courses it, right there in the middle. Um, there's also adult education instruction, there's data management, support services, program and fiscal management, adult literacy, um, and the new staff and faculty orientations will be coming soon. But there's there are a lot of different um, topics that, that either are now or will be um, in that portal. So Don, if you want to go to the next slide real quick. Okay, so once you choose a category, you can choose a subcategory um, if you like. And so as you go into those categories, again, you can get a little bit more specific. All right, go ahead, Don. All right, so like here, for example, this is the adult education instruction. Um, the tech talks are the ones that, um, the webinars that we do once a month um, that are followed by workshops that are most likely not ELL focused. So we have a um, tech talk that is more HSE or high school equivalency focused. And then we have our ELL tech talks um, that are our, uh, ELL focused. Um, we also have training from the back of the room and teaching skills that matter. As a reminder, we do have now in-person training from the back of the room trainings. You can go to the Propel website to see those and register for those. And then um, the teaching skills that matter workshops, I believe right now are online, but hopefully we'll be able to move those uh, in person again very soon. And then there's there's a link to some Lynx trainings, which Lynx is a national professional development organization. So we have that link there as well. All right, go ahead on to the next slide. Jamie, could I just um, ask a quick question? Oh, are those, uh, I know those are available to directors. Are those also available to instructors? Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Absolutely. We highly recommend that instructors, if they don't already have an NM Delta account, to get an NM Delta account. Okay. Um, you can access it no matter what. You can create a free account on Propel, but NM Delta is just the easiest way um, to access seriously everything um, okay. that, that our Google Workspace has to offer. Um, okay. So if you enroll in a course, and yes, we do understand or, or we do notice, believe me, I already mentioned this, that the word enroll is missing. <laughs> um, and, and for an ELL webinar, that sounds really bad. <laughs> However, um, this is a Moodle platform and Moodle is Australian. Mm. And so this is the Australian spelling. We are working on getting that fixed. Um, so. And for the time being, it is misspelled, um, it, which is strange because it's only misspelled in certain places. Sometimes it's spelled with one L and sometimes it's spelled with two. Um, but you can, um, once you enroll in the course, you can view the recording and you can also take the survey, which will give you credit for viewing the recording. So um, as you can see over on the left, um, this was your first screen. So like Google for Education Tools, that was a, a webinar we had in the past. And so you click Enroll Me and that will give you access to those recordings and the survey. So yeah, please check those out. We do have several that are already on the Propel portal. All right. Do you have one more? Yeah. Yes. So again, make sure you take the survey because the survey has been created as a quiz. And so um, when you do the survey, you will be able to get credit for uh, watching the recordings. So just make sure, I know it, it seems strange to take a quiz, but that's what you wanna do, which is really, again, uh, just a survey, but go ahead and take that and you will get credit. All right, and I think there's actually one more slide, Don. Let's see, and I think it's not related to Propel, but we'll... Well, I don't think I added it to Okay, so um, we won't have the, the flyer up, but um, I just wanted to send or to give everybody a quick reminder about the Teachers Institute that is coming up on October 28th. It's a virtual Teachers Institute that is tentatively scheduled from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, with three different sessions that are happening, uh, two morning sessions, one afternoon session, 
followed by an open space, which um, if you've never done a, an open space, either in person or virtual, it is almost like an unconference or an unwebinar because everybody decides what they want to talk about and then you're split up into groups and you can even hop between groups to, to have those conversations. So um, it is absolutely free to uh, register for the Teachers Institute. Um, and give me just a second because I will get that link for you um, so that you can, it's just gonna give me a second. So please forgive me. Um, but I wanna make sure that you guys have the link. So um, again, just as a reminder, please make sure that you have your teachers register um, because we just wanna make sure that we know how many uh, participants we're going to have and that we can send um, we can send announcements or updates or any kind of changes um, that we have. So there we go. I found the link. Okay. Let me just stick that link in the chat. There we go. That's the link to the Google form. Um, so yes, please definitely register for the Teachers Institute. And those are all of my announcements. And I have to apologize here, Jamie, to you. I, I failed to get that thing up as you requested okay. earlier, but also my last slide was to include that um, that link to those uh, those four assessment tools. I, um, you know, email me those, email me that, that if you want to get that, I'll send them to you. I apparently dropped that slide somewhere. So um, any, uh, any other comments for today? We're just about wrapped up here, I think. Just I, I my uh, October twenty eighth just freed up, so I, hopefully I can get to some of those sessions. Well, that's uh, great. I was gonna be tied up, but that just changed this morning. That's great. Yeah, even yeah. if you can't um, attend every single session, um, even if you can only attend a few, that's that's totally fine. Um, it yeah. will be. You know, it's always really nice. We're hoping to be able to move back to in person um, mm. teachers institutes in the future. This might, hopefully, fingers crossed, be our last virtual one. Ah, uh, yeah. I think I told you, Jamie, that I was not going to be available on the 28th, but I found out yesterday that I might be available on the 28th. So I'm the same <laughs> way, Christy. I hope I can. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Were there any other questions or comments? No, thank you. All right. Thank you both so much. I am going to stop the recording here.